welcome or welcome back to my channel, Long Time No See. If you're new here, my name is Molly. I'm a knitter based out of the San Francisco Bay Area and on this channel I talk about all things knitting. So if that sounds like something you're into, I hope you'll stick around. I know it's been a little while since I've made a video. I had a lot of different kind of personal things going on in my life variety of just things kind of happening and my knitting mojo was pretty low actually. I just wasn't doing that much knitting, I wasn't feeling it that much, I was kind of slowly, it wasn't even that slow I guess, but I was working my way through my shifty and just even though I enjoyed it and it wasn't the pattern's fault, I wasn't really just having the same sort of enjoyment from knitting as I usually do. So there wasn't that much to talk about. I'm happy to report though that it did come back and a large part of that was the Bay Area Yarn Crawl which happened closing in on a month ago I guess at this point. I was lucky enough to visit all 21 stores during the course of the Yarn Crawl. I did it in nine days and it really helped me get my mojo back. Part of it is that I did buy a lot of yarn, more than I should have, but it was just nice to be out in the world and see different yarn stores and see knitters and knitting projects and to just kind of have that sense of community surrounding knitting that I don't necessarily feel a lot of the time, at least in person, because I don't have friends in the real world <laughs> who knit. I'd been excited about the yarn crawl ever since I heard about it um, many months ago. But I wasn't sure if I would be able to do it. I had a lot of friends, kids, birthday parties, just activities that I felt like I needed to do, especially on the weekends. But I'm lucky in that right now I do have a lot of time during the week. So I was able to actually visit most of the stores during the week. And I didn't have to rely on those weekend days to knock out all the stores. I did have to go to some of the stores twice because I left my bingo card at home when I was making a pretty big excursion across the bay to Pacifica and Half Moon Bay, which if you're at all familiar with the Bay Area are pretty far from Berkeley. But in the end, I was able to check off all of the boxes. I got a blackout bingo card. Unfortunately, I didn't win, but it was worth it for the journey. I recorded some little vloggy content and video in each of the stores, so I'll go ahead and take you into the past now and show you what the crawl was like, and I'll talk to you at the end about all the things that I bought. Hello, hello. Hope y'all are doing well. Guess I'll take off my sunglasses. So, I'm starting off the Bay Area Yarn Crawl today. It's March 15th, the first day. It's a little after five. And I decided I would start today with two stores pretty close to home because I'm at the wire. Both these places close at six. I was out towards Busy Sticks in Lafayette today, but I was going to be working against traffic. My vet is over on the other side of the Caldecott Tunnel for those of you who are familiar with the Bay Area. So I had to go over there to pick up some stuff for my cat, but I was not going to have time to make it to Lafayette um, because of the traffic. Everyone's heading home for their weekend today. So I'm gonna go ahead and start at Black Squirrel, which is in Berkeley and Avenue Yarns which is in Albany. These are both stores I go to a lot. They're really close to my house. So I don't think I'll be buying much, if anything, there. Um, I just wanna get things going for the crawl. I have my bingo card that I printed out at the library. Big ups to public libraries. If you don't have a printer, they're a great place to go. And um, yeah, let's go see what is up at Black Squirrel. I saw that Nitty Natty was there earlier today. Um, so I'm curious to see if she's still there, but I'm in a 24 minute parking spot just so I don't spend too long there. So let's go ahead and get going. <laughs> Thank you. 
Right, so I went to Black Squirrel for 15 minutes, walked around. They have some cool stuff now, new things that I have not seen there before. Um, sorry, there's a barking dog. I'll be quick. Anyway, it's 5.40, uh, so I'm gonna pop into Avenue Yarns really quickly. But yeah, knitting for Olive Pure Silk. I've been wanting to try that for a while, um, but I didn't get anything because I figure I'll be able to like go back there basically anytime. I'm just gonna hold off on buying anything from Black Squirrel. Probably do the same from Avenue Yarns, but let's go ahead and see what's up in there. This is my other local yarn store, and I've been here quite a few times also. They have a really wide selection of yarns, including a lot of Kelburn Woolens, Brooklyn Tweed, and Barocco, and they also carry D. Gilpin Lawland, which is a yarn I've really been wanting to try since I saw it there a year or two ago, and Lily Kate France used it in a recent design, which piqued my interest even more. They have a smallish but nice selection of indie dyers and some exclusive yarn, SMS by Martha Egan, which is very pretty and I'd like to try sometime soon. Hello, hello, back for day two of the yarn crawl. Uh, it's March 16th, it's about 2 p.m. And today I'm hitting the two Oakland stores, Piedmont Yarn, an apparel and a verb for keeping warm. I am on the street behind a verb for keeping warm right now and I'm going to be heading over there in a second. After that I plan on doing the two like northern East Bay locations. Uh, Busy Sticks and Lafayette which I was hoping to go to yesterday and Busy Work Craft Supply in Martinez. Um, those will be a little bit more of a drive for me today, um, but my plan is to do those today and probably Pacifica and Half Moon Bay tomorrow. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm gonna about to go to a verb for keeping warm. I'm really excited. I haven't been there. I think it'll probably be busy. They are only open on the weekends here, so I think this weekend and next weekend it'll probably be pretty swamp. Yesterday was really chill at the two stores I went. I went close to their closing time. So let's see what's up out there and uh, get some more stamps on this bingo card. This is a gorgeous store that stocks probably half their own in-house yarn and half yarn from other companies. They use natural dyes and are committed to environmentally friendly practices, and in addition to their own yarn, they stock Spin Cycle, La Bienami, and Let Lopi, among other brands. They have a bit of fabric as well. If you're going to visit though, make sure you check out their hours because they are pretty limited. I'm back from my excursion into a verb for keeping warm. I'm gonna put my sunglasses on because it's kind of bright. It's so pretty in there. I didn't buy anything. It's a really expensive store. There was one skein of alpaca, what was it? Like an alpaca silk cashmere maybe that I was thinking about. And then I saw that a single skein was over $50. And I'm not saying the yarn isn't worth it. It totally is. Everything was beautiful. I like walked around for a long time, but I'm not at a point in my life where I feel like I can justify spending that much on a single skein personally, especially because I have such a big stash already. You know, I may end up buying something or a couple things on this trip. I was looking at some like, or on this crawl, I was looking at some of the like lace weight yarns and thinking like maybe I could buy something somewhere else to pair with it. But like that ends up just costing at least as much in the long run as buying like two non-lace weight skeins. So on to the next one. I'm gonna go to Piedmont Yarns now, pop in there. I've been there quite a few times, probably won't stay too long. And then I think I'll probably get some boba and pop out to Lafayette and Martinez.
I grew up a 10 minute walk from Piedmont Yarn and Apparel, though unfortunately it wasn't there when I was a kid and my parents have since moved. Still, I'm really familiar with the area, so I have been there quite a few times and they're really great. They have a lot of Malabrigo, Universal Yarns, and Cascade, so definitely good commercial options as well as some more niche local yarns and kits from Kira Kay, who's a local designer and teacher. All right, I'm back from Piedmont Yarn and Apparel. Always nice to go there. This is my old hood. I grew up just down the street from there, so it's nice, it's hot out. Um, the only thing I've gotten so far today was from there, and it was this project bag for the yarn crawl. It has all the stores on it. I don't think it says 2023 on it anywhere. Which, I mean, I guess this is the first one, so they have been calling it the first annual one. But when I was a copy editor for my, or almost a copy editor for my, my college newspaper, we were told never to call something the first annual. Um, which makes sense, because, I mean, how do you know it's annual if there's only been one? You can hope it's annual, but you don't know. Anyway, um, I got some boba from Tea on Piedmont. I think I'm gonna go all the way out to Martinez first and then work my way back to Lafayette and then back home to Berkeley. Probably stop on my way from Lafayette to Berkeley to get some food for my boyfriend and I some more. So that's the plan. Got about 40-ish minutes of driving ahead of me. Not too bad, um, but yeah, I'm excited to see what these next stores bring. This is such a cute store. They have a little free craft library out front, which is such a good idea, and they have a good range of yarn. I was excited to come here because I knew they had Rosa Pomar Mondim, which I ended up buying a lot of and have wanted to try for ages. They also have really cute buttons and some other craft supplies stocked as well. All right, um, I'm here in Lafayette to go to Busy Sticks. I loved Busy Work. It's confusing. They both have Busy in their names. I loved Busy Work in Martinez. It was so nice. I got um, a few things. I got this yarn. I'll, sh I'll show you more later, but I got a bunch of um, Rosa Pomar uh, Mondim which is a fingering weight wool um, that I've been dying to try. It's relatively affordable, honestly. Um, and it was out of stock, or maybe they don't sell it anymore at a verb for keeping warm. So happy I could get it here. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna pop into Busy Sticks, see what I find. I finally bought some yarn on the crawl. Um, and yeah, we'll see how busy Sticks is. Last store of the day, it's 524, so they close at six, perfect timing. Let's go see what's up in there. This is a nice store with a lot of great notions and project bags and of course, great yarn. They stock this company called Walcott, which I believe is based in the UK. And I really liked the feel of that yarn. So I can imagine going back, the color offerings were also really nice. They also have a really cute store dog named Flynn and I can imagine going back just to visit him alone.
I don't have much footage of this day because my boyfriend and I decided to make a day trip of it for the two of us. Unfortunately, I realized when I was in the car on the way there, literally on the bridge and past the point of no return, that I had forgotten my bingo card, so I had to start over because the other stores I'd been to were easier to revisit. That was a pretty big blow, but the day was fun no matter what. I'd wanted to visit Royal Bee for a while, especially because Pacifica is a really beautiful town right on the coast. They have some in-house dyed yarn and a variety of other yarn, as well as a lot of good supplies and notions. There was a Seismic Yarns trunk show that day, and Ksenia Nydion, a designer I really like, was showing off her designs, and it was really cool to see her samples in person. This is a really nice store in a very cute little downtown area in Half Moon Bay, which is another very scenic coastal town. They had a trunk show from Valhalla Yarns, which is a local company with really interesting fiber blends. It's a bright and big store with a lot of yarn variety and fun notions that I'd recommend if you're in the area. On the way, I swung back by Black Squirrel and Avenue Yarns again, so I was able to at least check off two more on my bingo card, which meant that I ended up with four on my new card. So not too far behind, but obviously not ideal. All right, I'm down the street from Atelier Yarns. Um, I'm gonna make this quick. I think I'm parking somewhere that's okay. It says it's commuter shuttle loading only 6 to 10 a.m. I don't know, this city is so confusing. Every parking spot has like a million caveats. I hate driving here, especially like the more downtowny parts of which I suppose this is one. Um, it's not as residential as say the sunset, which is where I'll be heading, I think next. So hopefully it's a little easier. Um, I'm gonna run out and make a quick stop in that store and then bounce because I am a little freaked out about the spot, but. This store's on a busy street in a pretty active and really nice neighborhood of San Francisco. It was huge and had a lot of yarn. They stocked a lot of Queensland, Madeline Tosh, and a bit of hand-dyed yarn, including Knitted Wit. They had some really cool project bags made out of like a ripstop nylon type material that I'd never seen before and I think would be great for travel. one o'clock made it back to the car I tell you it was a very nice store they had some fun bags I might consider getting at their Marin location if I can find them when I go when's I don't know what day I'm going to Marin it doesn't matter <laughs> um I don't have a ticket yet so so far no tickets on my San Francisco day out I'm warm I'm like a little sweaty from all the stress and it's a pretty warm day out here today I'm always expecting cold when I'm here but it's not bad it's nice so hopefully I'm on my way to Love Fest Fibers which is the farthest out of the stores it's in the outer sunset which is pretty close to the ocean like a mile-ish from Ocean Beach and from there I'll work my way back into Firebird and imagine it and I'll be heading home from there the parking gods have smiled upon me this time. Love Fest Fibers is that building right there. I'm literally right next to it. Um, this is a much sleepier area of San Francisco and it seems like there's kind of a mostly residential stretch like in most directions from this store. I mean, that's how a lot of the sunset is. But so Love Fest Fibers, Fibers is up next and I just gotta put my charger and stuff away. Don't leave anything in your car in San Francisco or really anywhere in the Bay Area that's visible. Um, pick everything. And yeah, I'll uh, show you the store in a second.
The yarn in this store is all the work of one artist with the exception of trunk shows and I think a lot of it would be more suited to home goods, but it was still a fun visit as someone who more often makes knitted garments and accessories. They have mostly jumbo recycled fiber yarns and some very cool color core yarn, but they did have some fingering weight merino and silk mohair as well that was really pretty. All right, I'm on Haight Street. I parked just a little down the street of the yarn store. Again, I got lucky, so hopefully this luck carries me through to the last store. Um, I just gotta pay my meter, although it looks like it's flashing green, so I probably have a little time. Pay my meter and um, get going. Yeah. Let's go check out Firebird. I've been to this one before and I really liked it, so I'm excited to go again. This is the only San Francisco store I had been to before and one of my favorite yarn stores I've ever visited. They have quite a lot of hand-dyed yarn, but also stock a good amount of commercial brands. They had two trunk shows on the day I went, Super Glow, which had fun bright colors, as the name would suggest and Woolen Works, who's an Australian dyer, and this was the first time the yarns were available at a retail location in North America. I ended up buying some of the Woolen Works, and they also had Lucky Dips. I bought one and got a $10 coupon off my next purchase in addition to the guaranteed mini skein. We're done at Firebird. I love it in there. I was hoping they would have a single ply yarn, a single ply fingering weight yarn that I could use with one of the yarns that I bought at Busy Work Craft Supply. They didn't, but I still bought yarn anyway. I bought two skeins of Woolen Works uh, birthday balloons. And fingering weight and one skein of fairy bread in their surrey this is 100 grams which is nice so that's i think my second yarn purchase of the crawl i want to imagine it i think i'll be able to get out of the city around three which is my hope i think it'll be before rush hour really starts to hit on to the last store in san francisco let's go I really enjoyed Imagine It. They had a lot of fun yarn and the store was really big. It seems like it'd be a great place to take classes or just hang out and knit. They offered a huge range of yarn options, including knitting for olive mohair and merino, which I bought some of. And they recently opened a store in Berkeley, which I've stopped by since the crawl ended. And I can easily imagine adding this store to my regular rotation. All right, I'm done at Imagine It. My bingo card's looking pretty full. I'm two away from quite a few on my new card now, which is good. Trying not to think about where I would be if I hadn't left my card, but that's fine. Um, beautiful store, really big, really nice. They have a new location in Berkeley, which is great. That means I can go there more often. And they also have knitting for olives, so I got Two skeins each of the soft silk mohair and the merino, the fingering weight merino, in rust. And I've been dying to try knitting for olive. I know it's very popular, but I've never got my hands on it. You know, like I, I like to feel sometimes these bigger yarn brands before I 
take the jump. So I'm done with that. Um, I'm excited to give that a little try, probably make a little hat or scarf. Maybe I'll make a Sophie scarf them held together. I don't know. Anyway, I'm done with that. I'm on my way back. It's 2.50. Perfect timing. Hopefully the traffic won't be too bad. And um, yeah, I'll probably not take you along to Piedmont Yarns again. Hopefully do a quick in and out, maybe pick up some more coffee because I need more of that always. And um, I guess I'll probably see you tomorrow when I believe... I'll go down south to San Jose and beyond for those stores. It's Tuesday, March 19th, and I'm here at a pop of color yarns out front. This is far. This is really far. <laughs> I drove like an hour and a half. It's 12.45, so hopefully we can speed this up get to the other shops in a decent time. Luckily, I won't be driving that long in one stretch besides this. That's why I try to start the furthest out. Um, so I'm not doing this long drive at the end of the day. So yeah, let's go. A pop of color was quite a long drive away for me, but this store had a really nice selection of yarns, including some hand dyed yarn I had never seen before and a trunk show from Anzula, which I learned during the crawl is a relatively local company. They're based in Fresno in Central California. The woman working there, who I think was the owner, was really nice. They also had especially nice notions, which I ended up buying some of. Alright, hello. I'm done at a pop of color. I got these little stitch stoppers from Fox and Pine Stitches. Um, this sort of free roaming stitch uh, marker. And these flower ones um, by All Stitch Studio. And yeah, that's the uh, those are the purchases from here. They had a bathroom, which was very nice. It's the first one that I know of who did. Um, so I can head right to Fillory. Should be about a half hour drive, which, you know, all things considered, isn't too bad. I've actually ordered from them online before. They have Lang Yawal, and I needed a little more of that. Well, I don't know if I needed it, but I decided I wanted some, so... Um, I've seen a little bit of their offerings online, but I'm excited to visit, so let's go. Fillory is a really big store. Every time I turned around, I felt like I was finding more yarn, even once I thought I'd found it all. They have almost any kind of yarn you could want, and I was in there on a Tuesday afternoon and there was a group just sitting and chatting and knitting, so they seem to have a really nice community. Alright, I just got out of Filler Yarn. It's beautiful there. Um, gorgeous store, huge. It has a bunch of stuff. I didn't end up getting anything, but I can imagine ordering from them again in the future. They had a 
nice selection of Lang Ya wall, which I do like. If I lived nearby, I would probably be here a lot. And they have a knit along for an emotional support chicken, which is funny. So yeah, um, really nice store. Off to Uncommon Threads next. And um, yeah, I think I'll probably stop and get some lunch. I don't know about before or after I go to the store, but I'm definitely flagging and I need some food, probably a little more caffeine to get the energy levels back up. I like this store a lot. It was in a really cute area in downtown Los Altos, which is in Silicon Valley, south of San Francisco. This store is a flagship Rowan location, which I didn't know was a thing, so they had obviously a lot of Rowan. They had La Bien Ami and Bichette Bouche, which I ended up getting some of. They're hosting Arne and Carlos soon, who are apparently on tour, so that's kind of fun. During the crawl, they were doing a little giveaway with purchase, and I got a cute holographic sticker, so that was a fun little bonus. This store is on the smaller side, but it does have a good range of yarn in terms of fiber type and price. They have a hand-dyed yarn from Alameda. The company is called Bay Farm Dye House, which is a couple towns over, and I'll probably go back and get some soon. This one is really close to the BART station in downtown Hayward, which is very convenient and definitely a huge plus. All right, it's almost five, it's 4.50. I just stopped by Arnea, nice store. They have a dyer from Alameda that I'm really interested in. So I might be back here at some point, although I did not buy anything. So that's it for today. I was thinking I might try to stop by Lafayette, but I don't think I'll have the time, especially because I have to stop for gas. It was a good crawl day. I think that this is probably the day, well, it depends. This is probably the day with the most driving. Definitely the day where I had to go the farthest uh, down to Morgan Hill. It's like 80 miles, I think, from my house. So tomorrow I'll be back with probably the Marin stores, Atelier Marin, Dharma, and House on Main. Maybe Martinez again instead. I will keep you updated. I usually hang out with some friends on Wednesdays during the day in between her baby's naps. Depends how much time I have, but I think Marin should be fine. So my hope is to get that done. Um, but yeah, so I'll see you for the next crawl day. All right, hello folks. It's Wednesday, the 20th. Yeah, that should be right. We're on our way to Tiburon to go to Knit House on Main. Then we'll stop through San Rafael on our way back to go to Atelier Marin and Dharma Trading Co. Uh, Knit House on Main closes at four. It's 2.30 almost. Should take about half an hour to drive there. Um, I just got done hanging out with my friend. So time to do some crawling. Need to make sure that I have my bingo card. I do. So yeah, we're all set for some yarn shopping. Tiburon is a really beautiful town right on the bay and it has gorgeous views of San Francisco. And Knit House on Main is a great excuse to visit. They have floor to ceiling yarn and ladders, which remind me of a Beauty and the Beast library. They have knitting for olive and a Japanese yarn that's not available anywhere else nearby. I ended up getting some lichen and lace, hand dyed yarn, and a branded pouch for notions.
I didn't know what to expect from Dharma because I think of them mostly as an acid dye retailer and they don't sell commercial yarn online, but they have a huge amount of yarn. I could spend a long time in there looking for conceivably anything that I could possibly want. They also have a whole room of white shirts and bags and other stuff for dyeing. I've been interested in very lightly dipping my toe in the dyeing water, so I may be back for some supplies soon. This store's a block away from Dharma, which makes it really convenient. It's super nice in there, and their options are basically the same as the San Francisco store, nothing particularly different, but the staff was really friendly and it's a really nice place to buy a lot of staple yarns. All right, I'm done crawling for the day. Visited the two San Rafael stores. They are really close to each other, which is great. Lots of yarn in each, fun stores. Dharma has, you know, the acid dyes and such that they're famous for as well. Um, the only store I got something from was the store in Tiburon. I got this skein of lichen and lace fingering singles. The colorway Huckleberry or Fingering Merino, whatever, Fingering Weight Merino Singles. Yes. Uh, the colorway is called Huckleberry. Um, I got it to put with this yarn that I bought from Busy Work, and I think that they'll work pretty well together. I feel pretty good about this. So, yeah, that's gonna be a shawl with maybe another color if I find one or something else and uh yeah that's that's what we did today tomorrow I'm going out to Livermore to see my mom we're gonna go to the Livermore stores together I think I will also then go back to busy work and busy sticks I have an order from busy work to pick up with some more Mondim I only have three stores left no five stores left three that are not like I guess three I've been to before I only have two stores I've been to um but I have the I have busy sticks a verb for keeping warm and busy work that I have to go to again a verb for keeping warm is only open on the weekends so I think Friday morning if all goes according to plan and there's not too much traffic or anything Friday morning I should be done with my crawl we're in the home stretch Mostly places relatively close to home, close to my parents' home, places I've been before. The most difficult part of the crawl with lots of driving far afield where I don't know what I'm doing um, is over. So yeah, I'll see you again tomorrow for a bit more crawling. In Between Stitches is a bit more of a fabric sewing store, I would say, than a yarn store, but they have a really solid selection of yarn options and some nice samples there. They carry West Yorkshire Spinners, Madeline Tosh, Blue Sky Fibers, and I think I recall them having Ling Yawol as well. I got a little embroidery kit from them, which I'm excited to give a try. This store is in an office park that's maybe a bit of an odd location, but they have a lot of really great yarn. They have really nice samples as well, I think all knit by the owner. I struggled to get video of it, I think because of maybe the fluorescent lights for some reason. Through my camera, it appeared like there was a lot of weird flickering. In any case, they did have a lot of nice stuff and nice staff.
Hello, hello. It is Thursday, March, whatever day Thursday is. The 21st. I'm in Livermore. I just finished visiting the two Livermore stores and hanging out with my parents for a little bit. Yeah, so now off to Lafayette. I'm gonna go to Busy Sticks again and then Busy Work, pick up my order from them, and then home. And the only store I have left is A Verb for Keeping Warm, round two. So I've been to all the stores. I had a great time. I, you know, have a little bit of yarn, so I'll be checking out what's up at the, uh, mostly at Busy Sticks, probably. I think I probably patronized busy work enough for the moment. Yeah, I think I'm good there probably. Um, although I do like the Bish, um, that Boosh yarn. Got a little bit of that from Los Altos. May try to match, I don't know, no. Anyway, <laughs> off to the last, or two of the last three stores. I'm gonna start in Lafayette, even though that's closer to me than Martinez because that store closes at five. Um, I should have plenty of time, but I'm just going to stop there. I'll stop at Martinez and then I'll make my way home. I hope you enjoyed taking that little tour through my crawl. I guess I'll go through in order all the things that I bought during the crawl and talk you through them, talk a little bit about projects I'm thinking of making with them and just kind of share my thinking behind <laughs> most of these purchases. So the first thing I bought was from Piedmont Yarns and it was this yarn crawl bag. This I believe was designed by Don Catherine Studios who is one of my favorite um, artists who does like yarn related stuff. I have quite a few of her project bags, which she sells at Black Squirrel, but this one was available at all the crawl locations. I believe there was another artist who did some yarn crawl based art and um, also had crawl merch and the crawl merch was at all the stores, but I decided to pick this one up from Piedmont Ave. The next thing I bought was later that day and it was a few things. So at Busy Work Craft Supply, there was quite a lot that I just felt like I couldn't pass up, starting with this Fiction Fiber yarn. This is a fingering weight merino. It's a single ply yarn. And it's from Fiction Fiber's Girl Detectives colorway collection. This colorway is called Cryptic Note. And I just really liked it. I liked the little speckles of black. I just really liked the, I really liked the blue. I'm a big fan of sort of periwinkly colors like this. I figured it, it might be a good idea to get something from a few different stores to use in one big piece, which I actually did succeed in. So this is going to be part of a shawl and I'll talk more about that as I talk about the other yarns. I also got this um, solid wool wash from Tuff. It's a uh, sock soap and I got the chai spice scent. I like the idea of a solid wool soap because I don't use my wool wash that much. I think like I'm, sort of trying to move in the direction of solids for a lot of my like self-care items like shampoo and conditioner. I think, you know, when you're buying liquid soaps, a lot of times it's just, you're basically paying for a lot of water. And um, obviously something like this is plastic free and I think that's great as well. So I thought that this would be a good addition to my wool wash collection and something that I'm excited to give a try to. It also came with very good reviews from the uh, owner, I believe, of Busy Work, the woman who was there, who I think is the owner. She was there both times I went to Busy Work. So I'm excited to give this a try. The last thing I bought at Busy Work was a bunch of Rosa Pomar Mondine. To start out with, I bought, I have four colors and I bought them in two separate waves. So I started out buying um, three skeins of this 
light blue. This colorway is number 114. Uh, there are no names. And Mondim is a Portuguese wool. It's non-superwash. It tells you like where the wool um, came from, which is cool. And in this skein, there are 100 grams and 385 meters or 421 yards. So I bought three of this one and one of each of these remaining ones. So this is color 117. It's like a grayish brown or a brownish gray. I'm not actually sure which. And then a darker blue, 113. And this sort of orangey red, which is color 111. When I realized I had forgotten my bingo card at home, when I went to Pacifica to Royal Bee, I ended up getting a little bit more of this yarn. So this was the store that was farthest from home and was going to be the hardest to get to. But I had been thinking like, maybe I need to get a little bit more of the dark blue or the light blue, this one that I had gotten what I was hoping was more or less a sweater quantity of. And I was thinking maybe I need one more skein of this. And then I thought maybe I could use more of another one of these colors. So I ended up getting one more skein of this. So I have four balls of this color, which is about 1,280, I think, yards. 1,680? 16, 16, 1,680, yeah. <laughs> and I ended up getting three more of this so that I also have four of this uh brownie grayish color 117. So I was able to go pick those up and I had another reason to go back out and I have some like tentative plans for these yarns. With the light blue and then a little bit of this dark blue I think I'm going to make the Fall Frolic by Sam Guerin. That's just a fingering weight sweater with a little bit of a detail on the yoke that is done in a contrast color so I think I'll use this. And then in this gray color, with both of these as contrast colors, I plan to make the Stria, or Stria, I'm not actually sure, the way she wants it to be pronounced, uh, Cardigan by Andrea Mowry. So that is a, I think, broken rib cardigan made with a main color. And then I believe her version has four contrasting colors, but I think I'm only going to do it with these three, or these two. If... I have some extra of this, so I think I'll probably try to make the fall frolic first. I may include this color, or if I come upon another color that I think would be a good contrast color for this, maybe I'll use it. But my plan is just to use this as the main color and these alternating as the stripes. I also bought yarn at Firebird in San Francisco. That was my next purchase. And I got two different yarns. I got the Woolen Works Fingering Weight Surrey in the colorway Fairy Bread, and this is 100 grams and 400 meters. I think 400 meters is 437 yards, just from like the th the other packaging I've seen. I'm pretty sure that's what the conversion is, but it's a little more than 400 uh, yards. And this is 100% Surrey. It feels very luxurious. I don't know exactly what I'll make with this. I'm thinking I'll probably make some sort of like scarf. I might go for something like, like a Sophie scarf with this. I might use it as a contrast color in a sweater. I haven't quite decided, but I just felt like it was too soft and fun to pass up. I also bought two skeins of Woolen Works fingering sock, which is 80% superwash merino, 20% wool, and each of these is 100 grams and 400 meters. And the colorway of this is called Birthday Balloons. I don't know exactly what I'll make with these. I'm hoping to make some sort of tea, and probably something relatively simple, because I think that this color will, um, I you know, I'd like this colorway to kind of have its time to shine. So I don't know exactly which tea pattern I'll go for, but something um, relatively simple. And there's a lot of options. They also had Lucky Dips, which was like a little envelope that you got to pick one of. You paid, I think, 
ten dollars for it seven dollars for it and you were guaranteed a mini skein and then there could be something else in the bag and in my case i got a ten dollars off i think my next purchase and this mini skein which i think is really fun my last purchase from my san francisco trip was from imagine it and i just got two skeins of knitting for olive merino and two skeins of soft silk mohair and these are both in the color rust the merino is 100 percent extra fine merino 250 meters per 50 grams uh, for each of the balls and then the soft silk mohair is 70 percent mohair 30 percent silk 225 meters and 25 grams. I'm so excited to try Knitting for Olive. I haven't tried any. I think um, the yarn is really soft. This is super fine. It's like a very, very light fingering weight yarn. And my plan is to hold these together and to make something, some sort of small scarf. I think I'll probably go for the Soul Sister Scarf by Sari Nordland. I've liked that pattern for a while. I think that it will suit this yarn pretty well. I'll probably make it a little bigger than the pattern calls for if my calculations are right. I think I have more yarn than the larger size of the scarf. But she has a shawl version as well, and I don't think I have quite enough yarn for the shawl version. So I think I'll probably just make an extra large scarf. On my um, like Southern Bay Area day, I went first to a pop of color yarns where I got these notions that I've already talked about a little. Um, I got these stitch markers from All Stitch Studio. Um, they are made for up to size eight, so they're pretty small. And I like that because I typically knit with size like six probably or smaller, US six. And then um, this is the pop of color logo. I got this like free floating stitch marker and these stitch stoppers um, from Fox and Pine Stitches and they're just little foxes. I thought they were cute. From Uncommon Threads I got four skeins of Bichette Bouche um, in uh, Le Petit Lamb's Wool. This is 100% lamb's wool made in the UK and each of these hanks is 50 grams and 248 meters or 270 yards. And I got it two colors. I don't know how obvious the difference will be. Um, but the one on the bottom is called Bonbon and the one on the top is light gray. And the Bonbon is gray, like it has a similar gray as the background, but it has these uh, stripes of color throughout like a pink and purple and blue sort of stripey effect that I think you can kind of see here versus just the plain gray I mean gray heather I guess so I got one of each and my plan is kind of to like alternate rows as I'm knitting. I think I'm gonna make the coloring book tea by Amy Schur with these. I don't know for certain. That is technically I think supposed to be more of a tea pattern. Um, I don't think it's meant to really have long sleeves but I think I would probably mod long sleeves onto mine because I should have enough yarn for that but if I didn't I think it would be okay. I think that it'll look fun to have the like striping of these two colors uh, together because they're super similar and the bonbon alone is just like a fun little it looks almost like it's just gray but when you're a little closer it's like it just has that little bit of visual interest to it. The next purchase I made was from Knit House on Main and I bought two things. I bought the um, lichen and lace one ply super superwash merino fingering yarn. Um, it is 100 grams and 400 yards, and this is the colorway Huckleberry. Um, this dyer is based in New Brunswick, I believe. That is the second color that I'm gonna put in my shawl. Put these two together. I also got this little, um, like notions pouch. I just thought it was cute and I liked the size of this. I only bought things from two other stores. I bought an embroidery kit actually. This is from Cozy Blue Handmade 
and I got this at In Between Stitches in Livermore. This is apparently beginner friendly uh, embroidery kit that has everything you need inside. I checked up, I looked, I think, I think Black Squirrel has these uh, kits as well or kits by this artist and I'd been interested in them and I wasn't sure, I knew that there was like a designation of like, you know, beginner, intermediate, whatever for a lot of these. So I looked on the website for these and found that this one was marked as beginner friendly and I liked the look of it. I've been interested in trying out embroidery for a while. I did it a little bit as a kid and I thought it would be a fun thing to try out. I don't know exactly when I'm going to be breaking into this one, but I figured it was a good chance to pick up one of these since I was going to all of these different stores. I went back to Avert for Keeping Warm as my last store. I skipped a day. I went back on the Saturday, the second Saturday of the crawl after taking that Friday off, and it was the last place I had to visit. And having already bought some things and knowing that I was looking for a single ply merino fingering and knowing they had La Bien Me, I thought that maybe I would get some yarn. So as I was walking around the store, I was looking at her um, single ply yarns and I ended up picking up this one, which is her merino singles yarn. It's 366 meters or 400 yards in a 100 gram hank and this colorway is called Nebula. And my plan is to use these three yarns together, I guess in like a rough gradient, I suppose. And I'm thinking I might go with a shawl. I really like uh, Knit Graffiti or Leslie Ann Robinson's patterns. I have a shawl by her, like a big long wrap that I love, the current mood. I was wearing it during some of the days with this crawl. And um, I think I might make her gem moon pattern with these, but I'm not 100% certain yet. So if you have three color shawl patterns that use like approximately 400 yards per color, let me know. But I think gem moon will probably be what I go with for these. And I just hope they look good together. I think they do kind of look pretty good side by side, but I'm curious to see how they knit up together. Part of what made me sort of break open the floodgates and start buying things there was the uh, crawl specific colorway. And this colorway is called Marine Layer. I saw somewhere that it was inspired by the Berkeley Marina. This is Silk Mohair. Base of this is called Frond. And this skein is 459 yards and 50 grams. It's 72% kid mohair and 28% silk. And I thought, well, if I'm going to get the mohair, which was kind of the most cost effective option, I thought, I should probably get something to pair with it because I think I can do that cheaper than I could do, like, something else. I'm not sure if that ended up being true, but I actually ended up getting more of the of the Petite Lamb's Wool by um, Bishop Bouche from Verb to go with this. So this is the same base, although this colorway is called gray beige and just to give you a little bit of a contrast um this is what the gray beige looks like versus the light gray and here's the bonbon so definitely different it's kind of lighter and it definitely leans um warmer i'm so close i'm like having moments of weakness recently where i'm thinking i might order another skein of this another skein of this, and then one more skein of the marine layer colorway in one of the different bases that it's offered in called Nibble, which I believe is a wool base. Because if I'm doing my calculations right, if I had three of these at 270 yards and two of these at 459 yards, I would have a hundred yards of this left over and then to hold with the frond I could get this nibble base which I think is about 200 yards per 50 gram ball 
and I could hold that double with one of these and make like a Sophie scarf or something. I don't think I've talked myself down off the ledge yet, but I'm not certain. I think I'm considering doing something like a ranunculus with this. I've kind of always thought of myself as being someone who didn't necessarily want some, like, I love my ranunculus actually, but I used fingering weight yarn held double plus a strand of mohair. So I really like, mine is much thicker than holding one strand of um, fingering weight wool single with a mohair. I thought of a, a variety of things. But part of me is thinking that buying another skein of this and one more of this, because there's only one more at the store, or there was one more last time I looked, would be the move. And then I could hold them double. And then the colorway of this like knit up, it looks so pretty. I think there's a part of me that feels like I have to jump on it while it's here and seek out as much of this yarn as like would make sense to buy. If I got another skein of this, I would probably make something like a cozy classic raglan which i'm planning to make with a um lace weight boucle and fingering weight like sock yarn from knit picks i talked about that in my make nine video i would have about the same amount of yarn for that so it would maybe be like a three quarter length sleeve situation uh, that would probably be more my move if i had a little more of this like you know closer to 800 yards to work with but it's a lot i already spent a lot at verb verb is expensive rightfully so it's very nice but it's very expensive so this is an evolving thing i'll obviously keep you posted if i buy more um and you can all shame me appropriately for it but some things have been moving in my life i feel like i have some things to celebrate Maybe I already celebrated by buying all of this yarn, but I feel like I could do to celebrate just like a tiny bit more. Because I didn't know these good things were going to happen, or were likely to happen back then, three three weeks ago. Uh, anyway, um, I'll keep you posted on what I decide to make with this, and I think I'll probably cast the Marine Layer projects on soon, or project, um, because they're running a knit along for Marine Layer through the 31st of May, and I'd like to jump on that. And I'm just excited to see like how this combination looks together. I think it'll look really interesting. That's all that I bought. It's way more than I was expecting to buy going into it. I think I kind of opened the floodgates with the Mondim and then with the fiction fiber single ply merino. Basically, busy work just like opened up the floodgates of me accidentally on purpose buying way more yarn than I meant to but I think I was pretty good about choosing things that are different-ish from the yarns that I have. I have projects in mind for almost everything. I think I bought like decent quantities with the potential exception of the marine layer. I bought like decent quantities of things so I have like enough yarn that I'll be able to use it in a project like I have project ideas generally like you know I feel like I often find myself buying single skeins of like DK yarn or even fingering weight yarn and I don't usually want to use my hand dyed fingering weight yarn for socks personally like I tend to want to use it for something that I'm not gonna like wear out so aggressively and so quickly I think I did pretty well like buying two skeins of some of that and having some ideas for a lot of this so I feel pretty good about my purchases. It was such a fun experience being able to go to all of these different stores throughout the Bay Area and to see what all of them have to offer. They're all amazing stores and they have really different stuff. I think it's really helpful to know like what types of things each of them have, especially because for many of them, their offerings aren't really online or most of their offerings aren't online. Somewhere like Dharma, shocked me because I had no idea that they had like commercially dyed yarn available in store at all and they have tons so I think that this was really helpful in terms of knowing what is out there and if I want to explore a certain type of yarn if I'm looking for a certain type of yarn now I know 
where I can probably find that type of thing locally. If you have a yarn crawl in your area, I highly recommend that you do it. If you're in the Bay Area, did you do any of the crawl? Um, I'd love to hear about your crawl experiences and anything you bought. Just yeah, tell me how you've been doing these last couple months where I've been MIA. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and consider subscribing. I strive to make videos every Friday, um, and I hope I will start doing that again moving forward. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.